So welcome back to another episode of Desert Island Tricks. Today's a fun one because we're actually uh, face-to-face. So it's the first face-to-face one that I've recorded um, and it should be a good one. So just to let you know about the format of the show, the idea is that our guests are marooned on a desert island. We're not really going to maroon them on there, um, but they're on this island and they're allowed to take with them eight tricks, one book and one non-magic item that they use for magic. Um, and again, lots of people get into the particulars so they can have whatever audience they want there, etc., etc. Um, It's more about the Things that they just couldn't live without. So let's get on to today's episode. Uh, today's guest is a Britain's Got Talent finalist who splits his time between gigging and working for one of the world's biggest magic companies. At only 23, he's managed to achieve what many performers wish to achieve in their entire career. And if he continues on this tra- trajectory, can't say that word, there is no doubt uh, he, there's going to be great things in store for his future. He's also my boss's son. So this entire introduction was written by his dad. He is, of course, Harry Nardi. Hello, Harry. Hello. That's one of the nicest things my dad's ever said about me, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me, my friend. So it's going to be interesting to see what your choices are. I have got a wide selection, but I've gone for ones that I know, love, and trust. I perform these at pretty much every gig. Well, it must be hard for you because you work in a magic shop. That's the thing. Tricks. And the thing is, you know, we do get to try out. And when we do release a new trick and things like that, we do actually road test them. So things like Imagine, uh, which actually wasn't even on my list, but I need to add that on there because I do that every time. Um, <laughs> like that, we take to gigs and that and tweak it for so long before we actually release it. Because we want, obviously, each trick that Alexander released to be the best possible version of itself. And it could be tweak this, tweak that, add a little bit more of this, add a little bit more of that. So we can tell listeners that as well as the usual adverts, this is... It's going to be like a long <coughs> Alakazam <laughs> advert. <laughs> well, I never. No, 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 no. Come on. So we are going to go to Harry's um, island now and we're going to find out about his first trick. So what did you go for first? First of all, I have gone for Extreme Burn. Now, this is a basic one, but for me, it's killer. It summarizes and sums up in a nutshell what I think a magician would be like. You take some receipts, um, you show the receipts front and back. With one flick, they then turn into money. So in my opinion, every time you perform with people, they always say, oh, can you make money or do this or do that? You know, And that one, I do just think if you was a magician, nine out of 10 people would do that. You know, They would make something turn into money. Honestly. Do, you, do you use it as your opener? Yes, pretty much every t- Obviously, you've got like ace. I don't really have sets as such. I've got like a couple of tricks to link into each other. But yeah, nine times out of 10, the first thing people will see, um, like trick wise, is extreme burn. I just think it's short, sweet. It sums it up. And it also, it takes away from, they may have in their head, like an idea of what they think a magician is going to be like. And so taking receipts and turning into money, that's a cool thing to do. They're not going to then think, oh, he's going to be cheesy. You know, he's going to pull a rabbit from a hat off. Do you know what I mean? Not if you're in a restaurant, obviously you're not going to do that. But I just think it sets the bar for like, okay, actually, this is better than what I thought it was going to be, 100%. Yeah, it's quite quick and snappy and visual as well. I guess everyone can see it. Everyone can see it. It's one of the ones where if people want to record anything as well, you can do it again, um, like later on in the evening. I just think it's just a brilliant trick. It's an absolute killer trick. And yeah, I love it. So for me, Extreme Burn is is a must-have. Obviously, you need to make it up yourself and they do use real notes and things like that. Um, But I know a lot of people perform it in different ways as well. I use receipts. Um and I get Steve Rhodes to do mine, but I know a lot of other people use like bingo um, or scratch cards, things like that, or Monopoly money. And it can really be tailored to whatever you like. But yeah, for me, receipts to money, that establishes yourself as a good performer um, and is just cool. It's just wicked. I like that. But I guess if you're taking money to a desert island, you can just use that to get a boat, right? Uh, yeah, that's why that's number one. <laughs> <laughs> that is numero uno. So that's a solid first trick, and um, I know lots of people <coughs> use that as, a, as an opening. Yeah, and the thing is, I think people are nervous, like, oh, they do this trick, they do that trick. If it's a good trick, do the trick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I it's brilliant. Yeah. I just think if it's a good enough trick and people do it, they do it for a reason. It's a great trick. So yeah, I mean, for me, Extreme Burn is up there. Good <coughs> first choice. So what are you going to go for for number two? Next is I'm going to uh, go for MD Mini. Good choice. Yes, MD Mini. Uh, now this one, again, every Every time I perform, I perform MD Mini. Um, it's strong and what it is essentially is it's a little Rubik's Cube I talk about it all the time it's a little Rubik's Cube uh, with obviously six different colours on each side fits in your hand um, 
and you get a spectator to choose any color, put it face up, cover it. You're turned around at this point. They cover it. Their friends can see or they don't have to see. And basically you can turn around and tell them what color they've chosen. Um, for me, this is just brilliant because sometimes you turn up to a gig and maybe some people haven't arrived at a gig yet or maybe the numbers have dropped a little bit. And for me, this is like my get out of jail card for me because no matter how many times they see it, they want to see it again. They want to try and catch you out. And so I've been to uh, gigs where there's been loads of people and I've only had to do two tricks, but MD Mini will be one of them. It'll probably be Extreme Burn, then MD Mini or something. Um, but also I've been at gigs where, yeah, they've gone, oh, there's either road closure or something at a company event. People can't get on train strike or something. People can't get there. And so I'm having to do like an hour or two hours or something with like 30 people or maybe even less. And for me, MD Mini is a get out of jail free car because you can literally have even like a 10 pound on the line and say right I'm going to try and catch every single one of you out we're going to play a game here if I cannot guess which colour you've gone for work it out you will get the tenner or something like that you know um, but yeah it's small it fits in a little ticket pocket or the little pocket in your waistcoat as well which is really good um, so pocket space is killer um, and the method as well is so clever I haven't got to peek anything I haven't got to do anything like that so my hands are free I haven't got to like get a glimpse of anything um, it's just so free it's fair and you cannot explain it there's no explanation from a layman's point of view yeah it becomes a um a challenge piece yeah so yeah. there's um i i think about the same with an invis invisible deck which not many yeah. people do yeah. so the idea that you um you do the invisible deck to begin with and then you say but you wouldn't have done that would you right get one in your head now mm. i think i know what you're going to do i'm going to turn another one over behind um, but yeah it's and then you just go you, you can do literally yeah. like 10 minutes just yeah. on, on that one thing new year's eve actually just quick talk about invisible deck i actually i did do that because someone done it and his wife was like no i was gonna choose a different one and i do uh steve dell has got a great opener which to be fair i do actually perform that and it's uh extreme burn going into invisible deck and um i done it and i say right now one more chance to win the money i've turned over one card in this deck but again this is uh steve dell's opener but it was on one of his dvds and i perform it. i think it's absolutely brilliant um but essentially it's um i've turned over one card in this deck and i know what you're thinking you've got to name that card to win the money even easier as long as you don't name the one card that's face down you will win so you've got 51 and 52 chance of winning and so you perform it obviously the card they name uh ends up being the one that's face down so they don't win the money um but then you you can't go into it again because i remember i'd done other tricks and he went yeah but that face down one what if she'd have done it and i went well let's try it let's give it a go i said i've never done this before obviously i have but i said i've never done this before let's give it a go and i turned around turned one card over and obviously it was the card that she thought of and then you know, it's so simple it's so strong and it's just something so nice about seeing a face up deck with one face down card there's no there's no get there's no where there's nowhere else you can go there's one face down card it's the card they named it's unexplainable super yeah i think it's um work and play yes is, you're right from magic k or something wasn't it something like that? yeah can't remember yeah, yeah. but yeah that's a great dvd as well um good choice mm. i personally use md mini as well so i can account for that's that brilliant uh, so that takes us on to your third trick what are you going for uh next i am talking about the trick that i started with uh mentioned right at the beginning which is imagine now again for me um i rarely do and i was saying this earlier to jamie before we started recording this i don't i didn't think i'd done much magic but thinking about it now this has got magic in it and this is um imagine like i said so wait there so just let's just clear that up harry does a lot of magic he means mentalism versus magic yeah okay yeah i don't just like talk or ramble on say jokes yeah i do mentalism yeah um but magic again they get different reactions i personally prefer the reaction that mentalism gets um however magic does get you the big cheers and claps and that's what booker will be looking out for as well as that you know just when they're out about but imagine for me is a must-have item um um, it's essentially like a mental photography deck, but on steroids pretty much. So it's very simple to perform. I mean, there's a lot more going on than the mental photography deck, but it's um, you, well, the way I perform, you can perform it however you like, but I start with the deck already printed. So they've all got different back designs and obviously different faces. And I say, this is all to do with your imagination. As I dribble the cards, I say, some of you may say see orange cards, some of you may see red cards, blue cards, purple cards, whatever. Um, but this is all down to you guys. So when I dribble the cards, just say stop. They say stop, I show them the card and I say, okay, perfect. Um, now just think if it's red or black and I go through that whole phase. So first of all, think if it's red or black, blah, blah, blah. Red card, yeah, heart, yeah, uh, two of hearts 
else. Okay, yeah, perfect. That's the card you're thinking of, right? Yeah. Um, and I say, right, let's try this with you again. This is all in your imagination. So whatever card you see, just that's the one that will be stuck in your head. So I dribble the cards again. Uh, this time, again, just as like a little um, increase in the impossibility, I say, now don't even think if it's red or black, just in your head, say the card over and over and over. And when you mime with your finger, like over and over and move it around in a circle, they say it on time with that. And you can join in when they're saying it. So it really feels like you're joining in exactly as they say it. So if your finger's going round like green, 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 it really feels like you've just tuned into their head. So that is the second phase. Um, again, both mind reading. I say, okay, that was mind reading. We're going to try magic now. Um, and we're going to use this card. I turn it over and I say, we're going to use whatever the top card is. I turn it face down, place it on a table. And I say, I want you to picture this card in your mind. And the stronger the image is in your mind, the weaker it is on the card. Um, let me know when you can see it in your head. So they can see it in their head. You snap your fingers. They turn the card over. It's now a blank, blank card, blank face card. And I say, but this was all down to your imagination. At the start, I said, do you have a good imagination? Uh, they said, yeah. I say, perfect. Because you saw backs, faces, and colors and at this point they're seeing the face of a card and the back of a card and I say well you've got a great imagination I put the cards back together spread and now it's fully blank so for that for me <clears throat> I can get loads of people involved I can get up to like 26 people to think of a card not that I'd ever do it that many times but you can um, so when you're doing walk around it's great because it's not the same card every time uh, there's no deck switches which is brilliant it looks brilliant you can perform it surrounded obviously I haven't had one person ask to see the deck of cards either um, and I just think when you when it's to do with their imagination I just just think it's so strong so strong so imagine for me easy mind reading multiple reveals multiple people involved it all happens in the hands you don't need a table or anything you've got magic at the end there's so many moments of magic for no work so imagine for me is a must have i think it would come under the bracket of mental magic anyway yeah i agree so um agree. it has sort of the best of both worlds doesn't yeah. it? yeah and yeah like i said so easy so strong and happens in hand so tables walk around whatever there's no restriction and i know it's a deck of cards to carry around with you but you get so much magic out of it it's worth it without a shadow of a doubt good and then that brings us on to your halfway point so mm. good choices so far thank you um, I think are all of them but bar one so far I perform so I agree I don't know what one you don't perform if it's imagine I'm going to knock you clean out no imagine I've got extreme burn yeah okay. extreme burn is the only one that I don't do good so that brings us on to your halfway point what is Sweet. the number four next is uh, actually a coin effect and it's one routine and it's coins across now for me, I've always loved Coins Across. I love coin magic. And I literally do the rough Coins Across, I think it is. Um, Dad taught me it anyway. In D David Roth. David Roth, correct, yeah. Uh, Dad taught me it. And just uh, uses three coins. Um, and I just... Coins Across has always baffled me. It looks wicked. And I love tricks that just look cool. And for me, that looks cool. You've got three coins. It's obvious what's happening. It builds every time. The final phase as well. Um, I get them to take the... Last, when I put the coins in their hand, I get them to take the last coin off as well and put it in my hand. So that's like an extra layer of impossibility. Um, and it also kind of ties into Imagination Coins by Garrett Thomas, which again, Garrett Thomas is unbelievable. He's so good. I've got another one of his effects in here, actually. Um, but Garrett Thomas is an unbelievable performer, and he's got something at the end. I know Andy's been doing it for ages as well, and it's where the final phase, um, when you put the coins in their hand, you get them to take off the, the last part of it, basically, and put it in your hand. And so they've physically removed the coin from their hand, yet somehow it then jumps back in because it gets vanished and appears back in their hand, obviously. Um, and so for that for me is a killer final phase I've had I've actually done this more than once as well to the same spectator I don't normally do the same trick twice but this one's really good because I go well it's just going up your sleeves isn't it and I don't roll my sleeves up for the second part of it actually I've had it where they go alright do it again but with your sleeves rolled up and I go are you sure like we'll try it again okay fine and I do it again with my sleeves rolled up and that way they feel like they've had a personal really personal experience where they've kind of I've stepped aside from the performing and it's now just a, a magician and I'm not it's not a magician against the spectator I'm not saying that but it's them having a thought in their mind and you step into one side and giving them a one-to-one -one exactly what they're after um, and to be fair I will roll if I'm performing um, for quite a lot of people and I've got to get around them all the second phase I'll say now people think it's coming out my sleeves it's not okay if I have to get around them if there's less people that I won't roll on my sleeves in the hope that someone says it's coming out of your sleeves and then I can go into it because um, so you're nearly trying to manufacture that yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and nice. I think a lot of people are starting to do that now where something may happen at a gig once and they really enjoy it. It's like a gag, you know, if you're performing on stage or something and a spectator says something, you think, oh yeah, let me try and get that in next time. Um, and I had this um, just 
just off topic, I had this on where I was doing a stage piece and it uses puzzle pieces and um, I wanted to get them to turn them all face over or something like that. And they took a handful out. It was a little kid on stage. They took a handful out, put it in the lid. And so they only had six pieces. I went, right, now you've got to turn them all face up. And they started turning the ones in the rest of the box face up. So there's like 950 pieces they're trying to turn face up. I was like, right, okay. So then every time after that, I would like body, like point gesture towards the one with loads of pieces in it and it would always get a laugh. Um, so I think it's very important that you remember the things that sort of went well that were off the cuff and try and yeah, manufacture them in because it will obviously work for a reason. Sometimes it will only work on that night, but you never know. So it's worth trying it. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to let you know about all the exciting things happening here at Alakazam Magic. We have brand new releases every single month and live streams every Tuesday. So there's so much content to dive into. We ship every single day. If you're in the UK and your order goes to over £40, we ship it to you for free. If you're international and your order amounts to over £70, we ship it for free, fully tracked. And if you live in the United States, we get it sent from our California branch, which means you have cheaper shipping, faster shipping and no import duties. Can't get any better than that. Honestly, there's so much to discover here at Alakazam, including the monthly newsletter with all orders. We have our own live academy where the world's biggest names in magic teach the best tricks in the world. And it's live, so you can interact and ask any questions you like. We have so many exciting things happening here at Alakazam, so make sure you follow us on all social media, Facebook and Instagram, to find out the latest news. Cheers, guys, and enjoy the rest of the podcast. I don't know who that guy is, but he's well annoying. Interrupting me like a rude boy. <laughs> Not after <laughs> that. Great. So we have reached your halfway point. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what you've got for number five. Lovely. Uh, next up is the Garrett Thomas effect I was talking about earlier, which is Stand Up Monty. Um, I absolutely love this routine. Again, uses my top outside pocket, um, which doesn't really get used for a lot of other stuff. Um, so pocket space is killer. Only uses six cards in total anyway. Um, and as far as routine goes, it's a Stand Up Monty, or free card Monty, should I say, that is just on steroids. It falls you when you're performing is absolutely brilliant it's so good so visual quick brilliant and i'm not just saying it because you're here and i want to be nice to you um but you do do it the best out of anyone that i've seen do it you don't mean that i do serious? but I, th I think that's because you do it so smoothly as well oh, thank where you you've much. obviously done it loads mm. you, you don't think about what you're doing so it yeah. feels smooth yeah Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, I honestly, I just absolutely love it. COVID, when obviously COVID was around, um, not many people had gigs. I obviously, I didn't have any gigs in COVID. Um, and I hadn't actually picked up Stand Up Monty the whole time. But after the whole two years, I picked it up without thinking it and it just goes straight back to you. You perform an effect like this, it is just muscle memory in the end. And you just literally talk around it, really. Your hands do what they do and you just talk um but i love honestly again this trick is so good because i love anyone who i've spoken to ever will know i really like greg wilson his website is sick the honest con man i, I feel bad because i always big him up but honestly i just think he's absolutely killer jamie it's a proper man crush no it is Harry honestly i'm not gonna lie to you right I just think the con man esque type thing is just brilliant. It fascinates me. Eve, I went to Paris the other day, or well not the other day, like f for four years ago probably. But I just say the other day. Anyway, I went there. Right, I saw people doing cups and balls, and everyone says, "Oh, they always perform this on the streets." I never believed them, and then I saw it in my own eyes, and I thought, I just even though obviously it's wrong that they're conning people, I just think it's absolutely incredible the the fact is just free little cups and a ball or this or that, and it's the same with free card Monty. I just think. For me, everyone's seen it. Not many people have had the chance to play it without having to spend money. And I think it's just so much fun. Um, again, this is a great one that I perform if I'm at a party and then there's a group of lads outside. Um, they're all kind of drink here and then they've had a uh, obviously a, they're having a laugh and things like that um it's so quick it happens in their hands and it's just one of the ones they, they've heard about the game and they want to beat the game and the good thing with stand up monty is you're in control the whole time every card that they could possibly turn over and be an awkward spectator it doesn't matter you've basically got everything covered um yeah and you do fool yourself with it seriously i do it in the shop so much i do it at gigs so much and it does just fool me every time it's so clean so strong and the final phase is what well, if you want 
want to do that, it's a really good picture moment because you get everyone to put their hands around all the cards um, and then one by one the cards change. I don't think that's the one that's actually taught on there because um, I think the one taught on there it is the same effect. You have to do like a half pass and things like that. Um, whereas I've just tweaked it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's so good. Stand Up Monty is just brilliant. So many moments of magic for no real work. Just memory, really. Yeah, I agree. I think it's great. It's one that I think I've always wanted to learn, but I've never had. I have actually filmed a different... Because we had a few customers get it and struggled with the instructions. Um, I'm not sure... It is just a difficult one where you just have to practice like phase by phase. But I did film different instructions because I do set up differently just to remember it in my head. Um, and if you do obviously get standard money at Alexander, obviously you do get the additional... No, I'm just saying... Don't laugh. I'm just saying it. You do get... <laughs> no, I'm just saying I do teach it. Right? I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to sell it, but I'm just saying, right? Well, I do teach the way I do it on there because I do set it up different. It's slightly easier. If you do get it, then it's always good to learn from someone. Like if I learn, if I want to learn mm. that trick, I will go to you to learn it, mm. right? So your touches on that are going to be worthwhile. Thanks. So I do think it's um it's a good way to so learn. take back your laughs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so number six, what are you well, going for? Uh, number six is one of your favourites, PK touches. Why is that not number one? Uh, well, no, these aren't in order. You didn't say that to be in order oh okay all right they're just would this be number one then um i would say yeah yay honestly yeah um i just think it cannot be beaten seriously it's so versatile pocket space is nothing nothing honestly it's killer you have two people whether you're on stage whether you're in parlor whether you're in close-up anything this is unexplainable. It will honestly stick with them for a lifetime and it will get you bookings. I've done countless tricks to like the my football team and things like that. The one they always talk about is how the heck did he feel it when you touch the other guy? Oh, honestly, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I think um, it hits everything, right? Yeah. So it's impromptu. Mm -hmm. so you don't need, if you want to do the very basic one, there's no, yeah. there's literally nothing in it. Um, it's something totally different and unfathomable. It doesn't feel like a magic trick. It, it's almost like an out of body experience mm. um it feels like real magic yeah it it's feels you know like real magic yeah it's the only effect that i've had i've done it with a mother and daughter once at this like uh i don't know what the event was but anyway i've done it to a mother and daughter and they honestly cried seriously because i was superb i'm joking <laughs> no they cried because i was like now this trick is just to do with your connection and you could tell like they had a really nice bond you know you could tell like the i mean the daughter was older than me anyway but you could just tell like they were for each other like with each other do you know what i mean um and so really just play on that fact this doesn't work with everyone i'm not gonna lie to you i'm gonna try something now it doesn't work with anyone this is solely down to the connection you have with each other you've been for, like do you know what i mean with each other through the whole of your life blah 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 um and then you do this effect and honestly i've never seen a react i'm actually getting goosebumps thinking about it because it was it will stick with me for the rest of my life and i highly expect it will stick with them because it was just such a lovely moment and i wouldn't have got that of anything else without a doubt it's also got me more bookings than anything else you do it so well you've done it to my um after we had a show in where was that show bromley or something like that might have been bromley yeah yeah but you uh done it to my uncles and they are typical english lads isn't they like isn't they they are just typical like funny but and you've done it to them and they were speechless they were absolutely speechless and to this day they still talk about it honestly it was brilliant and you just done it at t the good thing is you've done it we was in a restaurant you've done it to them at the table and also you've done it you've done like D'Angelo's touch and people from other tables would look over it's not it's honestly it does it ticks every box every performance environment it will tick I've done it I've done it surrounded as well it's very good um, I, I do it surrounded yeah I've never had a problem no on it you cannot there's there's not there's no fault there isn't really any fault with it honestly it is just one of the best routines I think ever in magic without a shadow of a doubt and if you have to learn something it would be that I'd say yeah I think lots of people are scared to do it there's like a weird stigma on it but mm. true or not i taught you it in your living room yeah um in maybe 15 minutes true and and that was all it needed it, yeah it, i think it's do you know what it reminds me of hypnosis mm. so people are scared to do hypnosis but if you're with someone and you do it with them it takes away the like fright mm. it's almost like you need to do an in-person
a masterclass on yeah. PK touches. No, it's true. But I mean, I, I know what you mean, but it's the same with, it is the same with any trick, really. Do you know what I mean? I understand PK touch more yeah. so, I guess. But I don't think there's ever a time when you think, I'm ready now. Do you know what I mean? I think you just got to do it. But I do know what I you th- mean. I, th- I think it's more the method with yeah, PK touches so. that people are scared of. Because <laughs> it is it's scary the first time you do any trick. Yeah. It's, it's super scary. But I think certain methods yeah. are more scary than others. No, it is true. And PK touch, the method is un- unlike anything else. So it's brand new. So you are right. It is. You would never have had to do this with any other trick before. It's not like you've got to do a double lift or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's completely different. I think that so far, all of your choices are just solid. Mm. Really good. Um, so that brings us to exciting number seven. Mm-hmm. This is a bank night. And this is the Mine Yours Mystery. Now, is is this your favourite plot in Magic? It is indeed, yes. It is indeed. I love bank night routines. I just think they're entertaining. They're just brilliant. Honestly, I love it. And again, as I often, at the minute, add on. So I'll speak to people about doing close-up gigs and stuff. And I'll say to them, um, yeah, I'll do like perform close-up magic and this and that. And I can end with a stand-up piece for the whole room if you like. Yeah, that, like, and a lot of time they go for it, which is um, fun for me because close-up's fun. I think stand up's really good because you're in full control then you know they are sitting back and you you've got your jokes ready to go you know you've got the things set up you can get people involved things like that um and a bank night for me is just a no-brainer similar to extreme burn money's involved people enjoy that um a game show there's built-in gags with the mind yours mystery the method's so easy i know that blank night by um john archer is very good as well um different methods but they're both very good um and i just I think it's so entertaining. If I, I often think as well, if I was a spectator, what would I want to see? And for me, I would enjoy that type of magic. I think you have to, Gary Jones put something on Facebook the other day and it's important to follow people like Gary Jones and Chris Conger and things like that because they are prof- they are full professionals. They've done it all. They, do you know what I mean? They've been there, they've done it. They've got the experience. And he was like, one tip for you, enjoy what you're doing because it will show to your spectators. And that is just, it's obvious, but it's true. If you are performing a trick you don't enjoy, stop doing it because it's going to show. I absolutely, love a bank night and the moment I stop loving it I'll not do it anymore because it does show I get so excited with it and I've changed it now so that the final one's got like a £10,000 check in it not written from me it's written from Alex Am, but anywho they don't know about it I nicked a check from the checkbook anywho um, but I just think then it's like it's just brilliant I just love it and I think it is so important to do the tricks you love every single one of the tricks I've said down there I love performing and that is important it is important that's why I, I, I quite like the idea of this podcast because we get to talk about the things that people are passionate about mm. like these are going to be the tricks that people could literally talk yeah I mean in Mark James's case <laughs> quite, he's, he's talked quite For a lot years. about it <laughs> yeah. um, and I've not recorded one with Mark Spellman yet but I can Holy imagine moly. that's going to be several episodes long yeah um, but yeah that's that's what's nice about it like people enjoy talking about them so I yeah. think that's really good so just to quickly clarify what bank night is basically um, envelopes or bags this and that and then one of them's got a prize in it that you ultimately ultimately want to win and end up winning and they even though they have three choices end up with the ones that are not as sort of high in value so the mind yours mystery i say inside one of these envelopes is a five pound note um i'm gonna do all i can so that you win the five pound uh, you go through uh, there's built in gags of it like I said they choose an envelope um, and it's really good because you have like we've got the envelope of mystery here can I get an ooh so then the whole crowd gets involved with ooh um, then you uh, before the guy makes a decision I always do it with a guy as well because there's built in jokes um, but before the guy makes a decision you get the whole room if you think the money is envelope number one give me a cheer again it just gets them excited you know it gets them happy it gets everyone involved no one's made to look silly because at the end of the day they do walk away with five pounds they're still a winner um, and then yeah essentially on the other two in one of them's like 100 quid and the other one's that check um so yeah very very simple method but just so strong i love it great choice so that brings us on to is this your final trick this is my final trick before your book yes Cool. What do you have in your eighth position? In my eighth position. Uh, this one is a funny one, and it is just simple, big reaction, and in Ireland. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I love big reaction. Again, so simple, so strong, so direct, versatile. 
For me, uh, when I perform at tables, this is my um, closer, not my opener. Um, and I think as far as it goes, you can't really get better than it. Um, I mean, obviously, you've got other tricks which are brilliant. But for me personally, I've got loads of tricks before that when it comes to tables that are more for... Well, this one is for everyone as well. But to set me up to walk to the next table, coming off the back of a massive cheer, and the trick will get you a cheer. That's the method. You know, that is the, the effect, really. Um, and so you get a massive cheer from each table and there's no other trick again that gets a reaction like that because you are literally the trick says go crazy you know so um, essentially you get the whole table to pick a card together so you'll say the first person uh, what value would you like ignore suits and colours what value let's say that's like six perfect um, would you like a red six or a black six red and then what val uh, what suit heart or diamond let's say they say heart you take out your deck of cards um, well that's in your hand at that point actually and you spread through the cards and you say now let's get out these six of whatever it was hearts or diamonds whatever um, let's take it out we'll leave it here in actual fact can you just hold it above your head for me so every, someone's holding up the card um, showing to the table and you say now on the back of each one of the other cards I've written a word the word on the back is boo if you'd have chosen the jack of clubs let's say uh, it would have been boo if you'd have chosen this one it would have been boo this one boo uh, in actual fact on the back of each one of these cards I've written the word boo 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 all the way through boo 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 um, um, but you guys didn't choose any of them cards. You chose this card, these six of hearts. If the trick went wrong, you had to boo me. If it went right, you had to go crazy. Do the honors, turn it around. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, go crazy. And then they'll go, woo! and you go thank you so much and then you've had a massive cheer and the next table will want to outdo them it's just a, it's just a fact they know what's going on they're going to want to outdo them um so then they're going to cheer even louder and essentially you've got a great magic trick you're not begging for a cheer as part of the trick but you are getting that verbal verification that the guy coming over to our table is going to make us cheer he's going to make us happy and let's get involved so yeah i just think no brainer big reaction if you as well if you want more confidence when you're performing as well big reaction's great because it's so simple it's so strong and you do get that cheer and the reaction again like i said sets you up for the next table who are ready to see magic so i was out with um a friend of ours a few nights ago dean mm. we were filming mm -hmm. and one thing that um <clears throat> i always look for at a gig is for the first table so when i go to a gig i try and either look for the a group or a table who i think will be fun mm. so normally they're a little bit louder they're probably laughing a lot they're probably a little bit more animated or they're dancing in their chairs or something like that and i always go to that because i want a big reaction at the first table yeah i want everyone to go crazy i want claps i want mm. laughs i want oh my god so whatever i can because then that sets you up with every other table Every other table then knows that you're there and you're yeah. you're, you're, you're not working as hard with other groups. That's your introduction, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, he's here. Whereas know? what's lovely about Big Reaction is you can use that at that first table to elicit that reaction. Yeah, 100%. If maybe, I don't know, it's early doors and mm. everyone's sober. Yeah. I d I no, it's true. And the good thing is with it, it's the same with everything. You know, people do like warm up acts will get you to clap or get you to cheer because it gets you used to doing that. You know, if you, that's the thing, you know, in, we always get it when we're filming trailers you know it's so hard because when you're recording it people will react but not in the way that they normally would as soon as the camera stopped rolling they go oh how the how did you do it? and they then react and it's if you warm them up beforehand whether that be a gig or any other thing they get used to that reaction and they're not as embarrassed to do it because they've already done it you know and they're used to it someone else in the room has cheered so it's not weird if they then cheer um yeah it's just brilliant and again it's great to do in the stand-up in your stand-up act i do it in my stand-up act as well tables it's just brilliant it's Killer. Nyman's a legend for a reason. He is, he is indeed. So that brings us on to your one item, mm. which I always think that in this podcast, this must be the hardest thing. Uh, one book and one item. So let's go for the book first. What book have you chosen? My, do you know what? I don't read many magic books. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, however, I have gone for Switch. Unfitting the Bill Switch. Ooh. Very good book. Who's that by? That is, I have forgotten. Okay. It's printed by Murphy's. I've okay. forgotten who it's by. I think John Lovick, maybe? Okay, cool. I think. I'm not too sure. I think so. Anyway, Unreal Book. Killer. Love it. I love the Bill Switch. Um, and on there is loads of different interpretations and handlings and methods and presentational ideas. Um like something as simple as one of the routines in there, you borrow a note or something like that and you draw on there 
a fish and a fishbowl. Um, and you say, now we're going to try some origami here with your note, a fish and a fishbowl. Check this out. If I fold it just like this, uh, we can make something crazy happen. When I snap and unfold it now, you will notice the fish is in the fishbowl, right? But now you can give that note back to them and you're reset, ready to go again. So next time you just draw the fish inside the fishbowl, unfold it, and now the fish is outside the fishbowl. And you can just go round and round and round, constantly instant resetting yourself. And I just love the little quirky ideas of that because I would never have thought about that. But that is just a nice little piece. Um, but there are other ideas in there as well. A massive shout out as well to Etienne, who's got something called Bureau de Change, which may be oh, an Anakazam product incredible. soon. Yeah, maybe yeah, an it's exam. amazing. Not to big up Anakazam, but big up Anakazam. But this is one of the best effects I think I've ever seen. If I could be the king of any trick in the world, it would be that. But Etienne has that title. He just does it so slick as well. Guy. He's the guy. But I, w- I would say so, um, again, not big enough, Harry, but obviously I know Harry outside of this as well. And he showed me his Bill Switch the other day and it's excellent so it almost feels like you're working through the stages to get to that mm. effect yeah I, I've got it and I've been speaking to Etienne about it recently actually and essentially not that we're talking about Bureau to Change but we're just talking about the Bill Switch but the book Switch is definitely worth grabbing um, there's so many ideas in there it's a big book it looks great it's printed brilliantly and <clears throat> there's just loads of presentation ideas in there and even ones that might help you in other areas of your magic So I've got a really dry mouth right now <clears throat> we, we need but, yeah. to make sure we have bottles of Water I have got one, but it's over by you, not by me. Um, but anyway, yeah, I would definitely get that book. But yeah, Bureau, Bureau de Change by Etienne is basically an any currency bill switch. So um, he's got so many touches on it. And again, you only get this from experience. And Etienne is the busiest performer that I know. And he's so quick with it. He's seen performance. Yeah, so he's quick. unbelievable with it. He's so smooth. Um, and essentially... You change the bill up or down, whatever he does, and then um, he says, I'll tell you what, we can do it with any currency as well. Someone name a currency, go. Someone will say euros. He'll go, okay, uh, 50 or 100, uh, 100, one bill or two, two. And then he produces two 50-pound notes, and or 50-euro notes, sorry. And he can do that then with any currency. So if someone then says Turkish lira, he goes, uh, Turkish, okay, right, let's try it now. He then does a bill switch to Turkish lira or African rand, is it? Maybe rand or something like that, or anything. It's unbelievable. But yeah, he's brilliant. For tables, walk around, bill switch is just so good borrows a note as well borrows an object brilliant good choice and that takes us on to your probably the hardest thing uh, your non-magic item that you couldn't live without because you use it in magic this is i feel like i'm cheating here but i'm gonna say a good suit i don't think that's cheating i think that's fair enough it fits the criteria doesn't it yeah for me, honestly, looking smart, feeling smart sets you up good. I've got an aftershave that I wear every time I gig. It, it feels like, all right, now it's, now it's time to go. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny, but it's like, okay, now's the time that we're going to be performing. It gets me in the zone, the mental zone. As soon as I smell that cologne, I think, right, that's it, let's go. Um, but the suit as well, right? So honestly, I've had... Um, a lot of the times, um, like when I ask like a, um, a booker for a review or things like that, they often mention um, that I was smartly dressed. And it's something that you don't often think about. But if someone rocks up, I mean, just I'm not just trying to big him up, right? But uh, if any of you know Lewis Fuller, right? He always comes in. Every time he comes in, he looks smart, right? And you just think, look smart. Do you know what I mean? He really sticks out. You just think, okay, I'll listen to what he's got. Do you know what I mean? I've got to listen to what he's got to say. And I just think whenever I go to gigs, if I feel smart and look smart and obviously, Obviously, pocket space is important as well. Um, I bought a suit the other day. It had one pocket on the trousers, one on the bum. I, I sent that straight back. I sent that straight back because every single one of my suits has got pockets in the same area. Because what you don't want to do is fumble around or think, I've got all these tricks. What can I do? Because the good thing with um, my walk around set is I'll tell you exactly what's in each pocket right now. In my outside jacket pocket is stand up Monty. On my inside pocket is a, in my inside um, breast pocket, on my right hand side is my phone and my keys. On my left side is my wallet for if I do car to wallet. On my outside left jacket pocket is extreme burn and invisible deck. In my back pockets are big reaction. In my right pocket is um, imagine. Then I've got MD mini in each of my, or in one of my waistcoat pocket. In my other waistcoat pocket, I've got, um, coins for coins across um, and I think I've got pretty much everything covered and I've got PK Touch in my blood because you don't need anything for that um, but every time every single one of my suits has the same pocket formation um, and it just looks smart because it's essential that you look when you turn up you look good you're ready to go yep 
I think um, there's there's a thing in acting where you can be in a, a rehearsal and everything's good and it's all slick and mm. smooth, but it isn't until you put the costume on yep. that you become the character. 100%. And, and you don't give your all until... Mm. And I think that's what a suit is. Or yep. I will say, though, controversially, I don't think I'm... I don't think that you have to wear a suit. I think that your dress should reflect who you are as a character. Mm. So some people have like a scruffy sort of suit. Yeah. Great. If you look at someone like Steve Rowe, who's got like the purple suit, perfect, because he has that yeah. sort of Wonka-esque yep. vibe going on. If you look at Dan Sperry, his yep. outfit is scary. Yep. Um, so I do think that your outfit has to reflect who you are as a character. It should mm. be an extension of who you are. There's a wicked magician, Jamie Seagrave, and he doesn't wear a suit. He just wears like, he just looks like a fat fashion model do you know what I mean he looks wicked but he doesn't wear a suit but he just looks cool and that is his character and for me I mean I will always wear no matter what the event is I will always wear a three piece suit because it just that's me in the zone then you know um, I think it looks slick and I, again I was speaking to Chris Harden who again is a massive just fantastic magician unbelievable and he's helped me so much same as you Gem I do appreciate everything you've done for me um, but um, Chris Harden as well has given me so many tips and he's like right let's look at your character what are you going to wear for me I can picture you wear, like looking smart in a suit and I've always worn a suit before and I'll always wear a suit after because that just makes me feel like that's the performer I want to be um, but you are 100% right pick what you feel comfortable in as well if you don't like wearing a suit don't wear a suit I don't wear ties I don't like the feel of a tie so I'm not going to wear one whereas I know um, Dean Dean Levy again wears ties he looks brilliant he, and he, he wears ties he uh, had a bow tie the other night yeah that he he learnt to tie himself mm. and he when he was he's got too to much time on his hands hasn't he, he <laughs> I'm joking um, but when he was talking to me about it it made perfect sense so he said if you buy it like a, a pre-made mm. bow tie it looks too perfect it mm. doesn't look like you've done it yourself mm. and it's authentic he said there's something about ha doing it yourself yeah. it makes it a little bit not perfect and it makes it feel more authentic mm. like that level of detail is but amazing. it's true it's honestly i really think if you want to go i mean if you want to you look at the top performers and i just think they everything they do actually think about even actors or this or that and it's we we actually had in a shop the other day right the head of security of apple come into the store right Right. He's a magician. He's such a nice guy, right? He was just talking about the level of detail. And it's, it's not really relevant, but it kind of is. The level of detail Apple go into with their products and packaging. And he was like, the slow, if you've ever had an iPhone or an Apple product, you lift the lid and it really slowly comes out. And it just, he said, it's just to build anticipation. And they thought about everything. And I really think as a performer, you do have to think about everything. And really, because some people might not notice it, but if, for the people that do, it's killer. And Mark James is big on this as well, because he talks about it in his stage show. And his academy is brilliant as well. And he goes about it in depth on them as well. One of the academies he speaks about, he's got so many like uh, quotes from films and bits from films. Nine out of 10 people aren't going to pick up on it, but the people that do are going to go up to him and think, wow, so clever that you've done that. And that's the level of detail. And Mark James, again, fantastic performer. And he puts so much effort and detail, attention to detail in it. And I just think at the end of the day, this is, you are a performer. You Do you not want to put effort in, really? Do you know what I mean? You want to really be on top of your game. And I just think, yeah, I mean, level of detail is important. But yeah, for me, a suit, same same pocket formation, free piece every time because I know MD Mini's in that little pocket, business cards and coins in the other one. Um, and just get used to it. It's good. Good, solid choice. Thank so you. that brings us to the end of your Desert Island Tricks. I, do you know what? Really enjoyed it. I hope everyone at home did as well. And if not, then uh, don't tell me because it's going to make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously. We, we haven't got like a podcast email yet, so they can't write in and complain anyway. Well, they can ring up the shop. Sales we've got at phone line. Yeah. yeah, if you ever do want to talk to Harry, um, call up the shop. He's always there. No, we are actually always there. And do you know what as well, guys? Just quickly, on the last Saturday of each month, we actually open our, our door. And we have so... Last time we done it, we had so many people come down. It was so much fun. You got to like meet other magicians and things like that there was no like oh show us a trick show us a trick. it's not like that it's not like that it's just a place to meet people talk about things maybe you're you want to get uh you're thinking about getting a trick and someone else in there has already got the trick and can like show you or give you tips or things like that give you a bit more information um and honestly it's just such a good place to learn and honestly i've learned so much obviously knowing people like jamie and doing the academies i've learned so many tips from different people that i would never have known if I wasn't in obviously the situation I mean obviously I'm blessed in the fact that I work in a magic shop and I'm surrounded by people at the top of their game um, but I would 100% really recommend coming down to the shop 
just to be around other magicians because someone might say something that will just be like I've been looking for that for like years like I've needed the answer to this question for years and that one person said something that's just sorted it out for me it's like a, a live version of this really isn't it because mm. people recommend different 100% like we had a guy in a few weeks ago didn't we who wanted a certain trick yes and then I said to him you know probably not the best version of that for you yeah and then he ended up going for the other one yeah Um, and that's what it's about it's about experience and we get to talk to lots of people experience um but just to be fair if anyone does want to find out about you you or alakazam or um anything that's coming up where do they mm. go to um so alakazam.co.uk obviously um also you can look at um well to be fair i'm answered on there all the time anyway i've got an email alakazam which is harry at alakazam.co.uk so if you've got any questions about anything else let us know but apart from that i think we're all good you know where to find us and where what about social media socials uh, is Harry Nardi Magician and um, Alakazam Magic Shop or Alakazam Magic Limited on Facebook and follow our socials we've got so much content coming out honestly it's insane and yeah. loads of beneficial stuff kids trick coins tricks mentalism we got everything covered so you may see something on there again that you've been looking to fill and we've got the perfect trick for you so have a look and this is this podcast is only one of many many things that are coming out this year mm. so if you want to be the first to find out about it it really is beneficial for you to check out all of the socials as well. without a doubt without a doubt cannot wait honestly and i can't wait and if you want to follow harry's individual just him as a performer then do check out his social media um, specifically his Instagram, because not only does he post on there his magic, but also his food, which is also really good. Yeah, I love food, honestly. I love it. He literally does. Anywho, thank you very much, everyone, honestly. It means the world. So with that, we will see you again soon on another Desert Island Tricks. Bye, guys. Hi, Peter Nardi here, and I really hope you enjoyed that podcast. I just wanted to make you know that Alakazam have their own app. You can download it from the App Store or the Google Play Store. By downloading the app, it will make your shopping experience even slicker at Alakazam. You'll also get exclusive in-app offers and in-app live streams. So go download it now, and we'll see you on the next podcast.